Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman. Uh, the folks at VisualStudio.com said that y'all wanted to see how I use Visual Studio. I'm not really sure why that would be interesting, but I figured it couldn't hurt, so I put together a small video here. Now, you're looking at one of my monitors. I've actually got three 4K monitors that are kind of across each other, but I'm doing this one on a, on a lower resolution center monitor, so you'll have to bear with me. Now, I've got a number of Visual Studios actually on my machine. If I type in Visual Studio here in the start menu, you'll see a couple things. Visual Studio Code, new icon, Visual Studio 2019, Visual Studio 2017 from before. Notice the green icon here from Visual Studio Code Insiders. That's a kind of a daily build. And then if I go to Visual Studio 2019, I actually have two Visual Studios installed. I've got an internal preview and Visual Studio 2019 itself. That's really cool because you can run these things side by side. I, I can install, uninstall, update these. And if one doesn't work, I can use another one uh, because it might not be uh, like this is internal and that one's more stable. So that's cool. So if I go and say something like 2019 and launch that, starts up right away and shows you the recent stuff. I could go and open a folder or even, you know, clone directly from GitHub, which is kind of cool. I've got my podcast that I'm working on. I'm porting. This is about a 15 or 16 year old app that I'm porting. This is an old web forms app. Uh, so different different things that I'm doing here. If I go and look at uh, Hanselman, it's core. No, actually, yeah, this is my podcast site. So this one is for my podcast. Here I'll bring up, uh, I'm using Edge, uh, a Canary version of Edge. Uh, so here's my podcast called Hansel Minute. So this this website here uh, is done in ASP.NET Core and hosted on Azure. It's a real website that I really care about. And if I go to dev.azure.com, I've got my main website and I've got my Hansel Minutes website and the pipeline that I can go and manage that. So here I'm updating and then releasing that out to production. So that's here in Visual Studio 2019. Now I'm using live unit testing, which is pretty cool. So here I've turned that on and you'll notice on the left hand side here, things are being covered by tests as I write code. Like, so as I make a change to some code, uh, let me see if I change that to like, I don't know. See how these all changed? I'm gonna keep writing code and doing stuff. Look, I just broke broke a test so just while typing. I didn't compile. I didn't do anything. I didn't even save. Look at the little star there. I didn't even save this. It automatically noticed that that was breaking a test. I'll go ahead and go back and undo that. I want to make sure that that does not break tests as I'm going around and uh, working on my index pages. I can see coverage as I move through all of my things. Now that's live unit testing. I've got about 19 tests. Turns out I've actually got more tests than that. I've actually got 23 tests. Uh, some of these tests use a thing called Selenium, which automates my browser and let me look at um, not unit tests per se, but full integration tests. So here I am launching Selenium, uh, which is going to go and launch Chrome. And you'll notice in a second, it says Chrome is being controlled by automated test software. I could also launch Edge or Firefox. And that's going to go and talk to my actual back end. So this is more of a more of a smoke test. You'll notice that I've got 23 tests here in my test explorer, but I've only got 19 in my regular tests. That's because four of these are these smoke tests, and I really don't feel like I should run those during live unit testing because I'd have Chrome popping up all the time. Plus, it doesn't really make sense. I want my live unit tests to go fast, 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 fast. So what I can actually do here, let's see if any of these fail. Oh, looks like one of them failed. I can actually see... Oh, I've got a carriage return line feed here when I should not, or at least I didn't expect one. So I either need to fix the test and what it's expected, or maybe fix something else. But I want to point out that some of these are, are skippable facts, meaning that they are tests that don't need to run. I don't want to run things if I'm in Docker or in a build server. So I have a, a little check for that. And I also want to make sure that my uh, live unit testing live unit is not something that there you go look at that that one of the traits of this test is that you skip it when live unit testing so 19 tests here 23 tests here and i could go in there and potentially fix that one if i felt like it i can go up here and uh, let's go ahead and actually go there and then check out the web browser you can see i can have firefox chrome edge canary pick those and then go ahead and start and go and debug my 
application. See my nice big green, cool uh, mouse there? I'm all about the giant mouse. You can go in Start Menu and type in Mouse Cursor and make that really big or rainbowy or whatever makes you happy. Okay. This is going to go and launch my site. Yep, see, look at that there. So that's interesting. I can go and maybe debug a particular issue in the Edge browser to find out why this is not working. It's actually a security thing. And then one of the things that I like about Visual Studio 2019 is this process memory and all of my events that occurred. So I can see my caching starting up. You can see calls to different parts of my application. If I want to catch output, anything that's done in my logging, I can also take a snapshot, see, and then go and dig into what's happening in my memory right now. Well, look at that. It turns out that I actually have almost 700 episodes of my podcast, so you'll notice that about a megabyte of memory is being used up. You might think to yourself, why are you doing that, Scott? Well, I don't want to hit the database all the time. So in fact, I've got instances, instances, look, of V2 show, right? Let's look at my extensions. I'm going to hit extensions, manage extensions, and see what I got here. I've got live share, which lets me go and share my code, but not my pixels with folks. I use the Cloud Explorer sometimes, for Visual Studio 2019. That lets me go and see what's going on uh, in Azure, because this application lives in Azure. So for example, I can go over here, click on Cloud Explorer. Now I have my work account, which I don't really use, and I have my personal account. This one's my personal right here. I think I might want to actually filter these out, because I really only care about my Visual Studio MSDN account. So I'll turn these all off, hit apply. So now I'm just going to see, there we go, my local resources and my app services. I can see the app service plans that I've got for my blog and for my podcast. I've got a Linux one, I've got a Windows one. Here's one of the blogs, there's the main page. Here's Hansel Minutes itself. What's cool about this is, notice that I'm not even in the Azure portal. I can actually click Files, upload a file, search files, or directly see, look, what's deployed, which is really cool. So I can right click and deploy. I can also go here and see log files and then do log streaming if I wanted to. But if I wanted to see specific event logs or specific errors, just double click on them. They'll download them and put them inside of Visual Studio for you, which is pretty sweet. I tend to use big fonts. I think in this case I'm using Lucida console. I also like to control scroll a lot. I don't think that Visual Studio is going to say that I have any major issues. I'm noticing here in the health area that I don't I think I have any code that it calls out. But I could potentially do something like a refactoring here and right click and say remove remove and sort usings. So that's my Visual Studio, not super fancy, pretty straightforward, kind of a stock version of Visual Studio, but it makes me happy. Uh, be sure to send me your Visual Studio. Send me a screenshot. Do you have interesting fonts? Have you changed the custom colors? What extensions do you have? Go and at me on Twitter, S. Hanselman, and maybe go and at Visual Studio as well. Thanks.